Welcome to Small Business Hacks. Today we explain how a mental change, to not repeat the overused word mindset, built some of the greatest entrepreneurs in modern history and artists in the Renaissance. I studied this subject a few months ago. When you are a hospitality entrepreneur, there is not much that you can do during lockdowns. There are no guests, no complaints or compliments, no agitation in the reception. So some free time appeared in my schedule, and in these empty time blocks, I read the writings from Carl Newport. One of the founding philosophies from his work is the craftsman mindset. In summary, there are two ways of reasoning your professional choices. First, the passion mindset. People that follow this are the ones listening to advice like follow your passion. They are individuals making professional choices based on what they love now. The problem here is that it's difficult to know what we love, and to guess correctly that we will keep loving it if we do the same activity for dozens of years. Second, the craftsman mindset. The individuals with this reasoning are people looking for activities that they can improve their skills, and end up loving both the work itself and the result of it. It's based on the idea of focusing on getting good at something and allow the passion to follow your skill. On one side, I wish I learned about it years ago, but on the other side, it's fantastic that this concept came to my eyes in such a turbulent year. I'm sure that you can also benefit from it during 2021, and here I'll tell you why and how. First, discover if you see your work only has a job or has a career. It's commonplace to consider both words the same thing, but not for Emil Wyszczeniewski, a psychologist from Yale University. Amy concluded that most people see their work in three different ways. Only work has a job, focus on financial rewards and necessity rather than pleasure or fulfillment. Work has a career, focus on advancement. Work has a calling, focus on the enjoyment of fulfilling. If you are part of the third group, chances are that you never doubt the reason you work. But often people do not know if they have a job or a career. If your work is your career or calling, Maybe you are wasting time by not adopting the craftsman mindset right now. But there is a chance that our current position is an obstacle to adopt it. Let's see how to discover if this is the case. Second, consider the three disqualifiers for applying the craftsman mindset. Does the job present very few opportunities to distinguish yourself by developing relevant skills that are rare and valuable? One of the foundations of the craftsman mindset is the personal compromise to improve your skills and increase your abilities. This is important in a job that does not demand any valuable skill and can be easily repeatable. If this is your case, the best solution is to seek a path leading to a higher responsibility. This is a common situation among young professionals. Most of us went through a phase of mechanical, low-skilled to-do lists, and that is fine. But if you want to develop your skills, you should not be comfortable in monotonous, low-demanding jobs. Does the job focus on something you think is useless, or perhaps even actively bad for the world? There is not much to discuss here. If you think your profession causes damage or is useless, why would you want to improve your skills to execute it? Why would you want to be the best in doing something that you despise? Does the job force you to work with people you really dislike? The craftsman mindset demands feedback. A lot of constant, systematic and controlled feedback. It is difficult to accept it from people we dislike. As much as we are rational beings, we are also emotional, and a negative opinion about our work comes in a better light when made by someone we like or even admire. Third, reserve time for deliberate practice. Practice for a craftsman? Deliberate practice is almost everything. Someone may argue that Mozart was born a genius, but he didn't write his masterpiece for spending over 10,000 hours in deliberate practice of his composing and musical skills. The same principle is valid for Renaissance masters like Michelangelo or Raphael. Deliberate practice is not only applicable to the arts. Most successful skiers start their practice between 5 to 8 years old. Elon Musk wrote his first software when he was a preteen. You may think by now that you are too old to use these principles. But as Daniel Coyle wrote in his book, The Thailand Code, the tremendous positive benefits of deliberate practice in brain alienation go way beyond early adulthood. In fact, they are visible even in people over their 60s. 
Now that you know that the key ingredient for the craftsman mindset is deliberate practice, reserve time for it. Deep work and deliberate practice demands time. If you want to achieve excellence somewhere in the future, probably you need to drop some immediate urgency. This trade-off between practicing skills for the long term versus immediate rewards is one of the reasons people cannot stick to their goals, favoring routines with no skill improvement. Reserve time for deliberate practice. The mood tasking is an enemy of deliberate practice. Block some hours in your schedule every week to exercise valuable skills without interruption. This compromise is a must for the discipline necessary to develop exceptional abilities. Consider that as an investment. By the way, please allow me a small digression. If you are enjoying this video, please give us a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button for our next videos and activate the notifications. Now back to our subject. Fourth, make little bets to receive constant feedback. The writer Daniel Coyle went to Brazil to solve an enigma. He wanted to solve the mystery of how so many world-class football talents come from poor São Paulo and Rio neighborhoods. Contrary to the myth that Brazilian prodigies learn to play football at beaches, he saw that the fertile grounds were actually cement carts. There, youngsters played a sport variety called futsal. It's like football, but in reduced hard courts, and played at an electric pace. With the condensed space, players do not conduct the ball for a longer distance, since quickly a rival may steal their possession. They instead focus on passing and dribbling. With hundreds of passes per hour, each futsal game provides instant and abundant feedback about the passing and dribbling qualities of young players. That is where talent is born. In the same way, once you start to exercise deliberate practice and tune your skills, you should seek feedback. As much feedback as you can, and as unrestricted as possible. In my business, in case you forgot it's in the hospitality area, I call for a pool of customers every week to listen for their opinions. Besides that, I read carefully all reviews we receive online. It's easy to obtain feedback when your business has hundreds of customers. But I'm also a writer and feedback here is a bit more complicated. My solution is that before publishing a book, I look for feedback from hundreds of subscribers from my mail list or page. I take seriously every feedback, and this played a vital role in improving my writing skills. There is still a long way ahead, thought. To adopt the craftsman mentality, not only should you be open to feedback, you should seek it as much as every sculptor or musician asks for opinions about his works. Once you receive it, take note, reflect on it, and follow up. There are few things as valuable out there as feedback, be it positive or negative. 5. Conclusion When taking career-changing decisions, there are two types of mindset. First, the passion mindset, where people simply follow their passion. The problem here is that it's difficult to understand our own passions, and they often change. The other mindset is the craftsman. You decide to focus on developing a valuable ability, and allow the passion to follow your skill. To adopt the craftsman mindset, first, reflect if you see your work as a job, a career, or a calling. Consider if your activities could qualify as a craft, and if the practice of it will develop valuable skills for you. Third, exercise deliberate practice. Fourth, make little bets to receive constant feedback. Ready to join me and adopt the craftsman mindset? And thanks for watching.